Hello everybody and welcome back to LMM and if you're enjoying what you're seeing on the channel at the moment how about giving this video a like and maybe subscribing to the channel to help us grow and perhaps even check out our Patreon. This is my Dennis RS130 dupes and you'll all be relieved to know that yes it is a bit of a clickbaity title because she is in fact fine. However it turns out that at some point in its past it very definitely wasn't fine. Recently, I went to Bressingham Steam Museums and Gardens and hung out with the guys at the Norfolk Fire Museum. And these wonderful people greeted me with, oh yeah, that one. That's the one that had the crash, isn't it? And I went, I beg your pardon? It had a what now? And they went, yeah, yeah, that one had a bad smash. And I went, I have never heard this before in my life. I thought I had this thing's history pretty well covered. I knew that it was delivered new in 1981, that it had been ordered over a year previously. It went to Great Yarmouth, it served 10 years there, and then it went to Stalham. When it was finished at Stalham, it was sold off to IFF, who, by the way, when they came to view it, went, what on earth has happened to those doors? They're all rotten, because they suffer from Dennis rot disease, where the water comes down from the windows into the bottom of the doors, sits there and rots them out from the inside. To which the workshop guys at Stalin went, nah, don't worry about that. Come back tomorrow, we got this sorted. So they went away and when they came back, the rot had been cut out and the checker plate on the side of it had been added. Now, lots of people tell me that I should replace this and put the doors back to how they should be. And I have two things to say to you for that. Number one, if you want to fund it, that'd be lovely. And number two, I actually think it's important to save the truck like this because this tells an important part of its history. If it wasn't sold off to IFF, it probably wouldn't have survived. So. Being a fire engine in the industrial service is an important part of its career. It stayed there for ages. Once it had left there, because it literally did nothing at IFF at all, it just sat around. Basically, it was just insurance purposes. You have a fire engine on site, makes your insurance cheaper. Bearing in mind that IFF is a massive chemical plant in Haverhill in Suffolk. If there was a fire there, frankly, you don't want to be anywhere near it because lots of chemicals, bad times, very bad times. When they decided that actually they didn't need a machine like this and they could get away with having either an A-series or a Land Rover, I'm not sure, but something fit in a traditional car garage, this thing went to Fire Training Services, I think that's the right name, where it stayed until the owner passed away and one of his friends then sold it to me. Now, I was under the impression that this thing had been well looked after throughout its entire life and it turns out that I am wrong. Now, there is no secret that when this thing turned up and I started with it, it wasn't in the best condition and it had multiple faults with it, which lent to things going wrong, like me being stranded on my way to pick up a bride for a wedding. Bad times. And if you want to find more about that, that's coming up there. However, what I didn't know was that this had very nearly been written off. And if it wasn't a new appliance, it probably would have been. And that's because on one night, when it was responding to a shout, the driver ran out of talent, experienced TFQ, which stands for too mm, quick, and it went into a bank. Now, we're not really sure why, if he was trying to corner, didn't see it or what, but it went into a bank and caved in the front end. Now, the photos actually look a lot worse than it is because most of the front end of this is fiberglass. The Dennis on all of that, that's fiberglass with the metal inlay. Beneath that is fiberglass. I think the surrounds of the headlights are also fiberglass. The bumper is obviously metal and the steps around that are metal, but you have the two frame rails that come forward. The rest of it is just, well, sheet metal. It's nothing particularly thick or structural. It did cave in quite a lot of it though. And obviously the radiator was gone. And obviously as it's still here today, the machine was recovered and restored and went back into active service for Great Yarmouth, presumably with the driver having a slap on the wrist and all his mates laughing at him forevermore. The good news is that nobody was hurt during this accident. I'm not sure what they were responding to, but it must have been rather, <laughs> can you imagine? High control. Yeah, uh, you, you know that emergency that we're going to? Yeah, yeah, ah, uh, we're not getting there. No, 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 slight issue. Yeah, just slight issue. The incident happened on the 22nd of August, 1987. So the truck would have been about six years old at that point. And looking at the photos, we can see that the damage was basically superficial with just the wheel arch and the steps and the front bumper being damaged here, which has all been happily replaced in the truck today. What's most interesting when we look at this side is that the bumper seems to have disappeared entirely. It's been pushed all the way back. So clearly this corner took the main impact of the crash. What's also interesting is my bumper today on dupes sits at a jaunty angle and I can't help but wondering if this is a result of this crash. 
although it hurts me on a personal level to see my truck like that, it's, it's a bit like being a parent, I think, that you see your child or your fire engine to be suffering in pain. It, it hurts me in my gut. I'm like, oh no, my, my baby. Though it is a painful thing to see it because I had absolutely no idea. And it's both exciting to find this out, but also yeah, upsetting. It is really good to learn more of this machine's history because I, I don't know that much of it. Apart from the, the overview, I don't know any of the ins and outs. And as part of finding out about this incident of the front being caved in, I also got to find out about some of the other places it's been to. And with thanks to the Norfolk Fire Museum, I'm allowed to share some of these images with you so we get to find out a bit about this thing's history and things that it has done, shouts that it's gone to. And that's really exciting for me to find out because having a fire engine is a weird vehicle to own. There are literally people who are alive today because of this machine. This machine rescued people, it saved people, and those people have gone on to live and have children. So literally, this is responsible for people being alive. It's a wonderful machine to have to help tell the story of, well, the heroes who are firefighters, who, without the fire engine, aren't quite as effective. But it's a lovely thing to find out and to see what this machine has done. First off, we have this image on the 6th of July in 1982, when the truck was barely a year old, with Chief Fire Officer Bruce Hogg with Her Majesty Inspector for Fire Service at Great Yarmouth Fire Station. This would have been an inspection of the station and its brand new appliances. And it's lovely to see UCL 492, my truck, next door to its sister, UCL 494W, that was briefly owned by a friend of mine, and we got them back together in preservation, which was awesome. The next photo shows the appliance responding to an RTA on the A149 near Stalham in the early 90s. Now, I can't remember the exact date that Dupes moved to Stalham, but this would have been its local patch that it would have been serving. Which makes this photo all the more confusing because it states that this was taken at Cromer with Dupes being a spare appliance. Now, I didn't know that it was ever based at Cromer and very unhelpfully, this photo is also undated, so I don't know when this was, but this is a whole extra chapter to its history that I didn't know. I don't know why it went to Cromer. I don't know how long it was at Cromer for. I just see that there is a photo of it sitting in the fire station at Cromer. Maybe it was on holiday, who knows, but a whole new chapter to explore. And of course, if you do know anything else about the history of the appliance, I would love to hear it. It's like being a proud parent, I guess. It's nice to see what she's been up to and her achievements. So that's all there is for this. It's really nice to be able to share these things with you. A massive great thank you to the Norfolk Fire Museum for sharing these images with me and allowing me to share them with you guys. If you want more information on them, then there's a link in the video description where you can find out more about them. They have, frankly, one of the most impressive collections of fire engines in the country. It's magnificent. So have a look at them and some of the events that they go to, including the event that they host at Bressingham, which was absolutely fantastic. And if you want to come along and get to see Dukes yourself and perhaps even go out for a trip on it, then remember to come along to the LMM Day at the Whitwell and Reefen Railway on the 10th of August. There'll also be the opportunity to do driver for a tenner on Sir William McAlpine with me if you're over 18 and come for a footplate ride if you're over 16. And you get the opportunity to see how the other Ruston 48 is going on and the latest acquisition of the 165 that you guys helped save from scrap will also be on display. We'll also have a couple of the model railways seen on the channel on display, including the modular layout, so you can see that for yourself if you didn't get to see it at the Statford Barn Model Railway Show, as well as a limited supply of LMM merch, including some of the figures from Model U. We're also going to be hosting a vehicle show, so bring your own vehicles along and join the lineup. I'm bringing some of your favourites out from the shed to be on display. So we hope to see you on the 10th of August at the Whitwell and Reefen Railway, starting at 10 a.m and finishing at four or five in the afternoon. All appearances of vehicles are subject to the usual, will they actually make it or not? And with that, thank you all for watching. I hope I didn't worry you too much and I hope you'll forgive me for the clickbaity title. And if you have enjoyed this one, how about clicking somewhere over there for the day we spent at Bressingham with the Norfolk Fire Museum or down there for less good times when, you know, dupes went wrong and I know somewhere here for another day at Bressingham when I visited to see it in the winter. And with that, Thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought when you saw those photos. And of course, we'll see you next time. Ta-la.